Hey Jackals, in today's video we'll take a look how to make this modern bullet point list in the Winch Resolve. Now I'll make just one element and you can go watch the previous video on how to combine all of the elements to make your own macro as a bullet point list. Now this is what I ended up with because I didn't record the correct screen so we'll make it again. So let's just take a look at what this element has. So it has rectangle that is animated, mine is not. It has three texts, the number, the title, and the subtext, which is what I have here. The animation looks like this in my case, but you can make it different. Now open the media pool, right click, make a new fusion composition, create it. Once you do, put it onto the timeline and go into the fusion page. Now we'll do this in the 3D space, so we'll use the shape 3D node. We need the camera and we need to render this out. So we'll connect it like so. Media out on the right, I'll select the merge, display it on the left. Maybe I'll select the camera first, put it back. Then in the shape 3D node, I'll change the shape from plane to maybe a cube. Now ideally what we would do is change the size, I'll just Rotate this a little bit so that we get this perspective. Then in the visibility, ideally we would call the faces, but if you call both, the cube disappears and we also can't animate the cube how we want. So instead of cube, we'll be using a cylinder. Let me just put the transform back to default. I'll change the radius so it's not as big. Change the height. And what we need to do is change the base subdivision from 20 to 4, so we get a cube. And because we have the caps at the bottom and at the top, this is automatically see-through. But we'll have to flip this round. So in the transform, we'll position the y-axis to 45 degrees. And the z-axis to minus 90 or 90. Now we have to adjust the radius. This will be the height, as you can see. So maybe the height will be 0 0.3, and that's the height. In this case, this will be width 0 0.35. Now everything is white, so I'll change the color to yellowish. And I have to offset the camera. So that we'll see the sides of the shape. And in this case, this part will be shaded. But before we can see that, we have to add some lights. So I'll add a spotlight. And the spotlight will be coming from this side. And to see any difference, you have to go to the render node and enable the lighting and the shadows. If need be, we can also add some ambient light. We can just increase the intensity and then position the spotlight a bit back. And maybe lower the intensity. So this is the shape. Now, if I want to make the animation as it happened in the intro, I could do this with the angles, but as you can see, it doesn't actually animate in the same way. So if this is what you want to use, that's okay. But in my case, this is not what I want. So I'll mask out this shaded part with the polygon. So a polygon, and I'll connect it to the render node. I'll just first make a selection like so. Then once I connect it, I'll invert the selection. I can zoom in, make sure that this is straight. And then I'll first make an animation of the shape. So maybe frame 40, this will be the height that I want to animate. So it's the radius. So this is the animation, the animation looks a little bit off, 
because it's moving to the left. And now at this point, I'll start animating the polygon. So I can animate it like so. And then at frame 50, I'll just lower these points down and move these two points up. So that's okay. Maybe I can move the points a little bit to the inside. Now I have to add some white background. I'll use another shape 3D node and this will just be a plane and it is automatically put in the center of this cube. Now in the transform, I'll use the scale, uncheck the lock X, Y, and Z, lower the Y value, increase the X value, and we'll be animating the X translation and the Y scale. Now I can put the cube more to the left, maybe like so. And because the camera perspective changed based on the position of this 3D object, I have to fix the polygon. Now I'll start the animation of the shape at this point. Once this animation finishes, so I'll set the scale to be this is the maximum value and the minimum value will not be 0 0.001 as you can see a faint line. So just use 0. So that is done and then at this point it will start moving in. So this is the x value, go all the way here. And ideally what you want to do is scale this all the way up on the x-axis as you need it before you make the animation because we'll have to adjust the polygon. So as you can see in this case, the starting position should actually be a little bit to the right. So the polygon doesn't cut it inside. Now I'll fix the polygon. So I'll zoom in. Move the polygon like so. And now on the second keyframe, this rectangle is now fully inside the polygon, so we can simply disable the polygon. But we won't do that with the levels, because everything disappears. We'll use the solid to animate it. So I'll use the solid here, keyframe it, and on this keyframe, I'll simply uncheck it. So that is done, and we need three texts. We'll position the texts after the 3D composition. The text at the moment is fully visible. We can add a transfer node at this point. If we want to adjust the pivot point, so that when we change the size, the one changes from the pivot point. So that's one text down and we need two more texts. So this would be the title and this can be the subtext. Now this animation can be done from inside the cube and we can use a mask to be a rectangle, so I'll simply position the rectangle here and we can use the mergers to make the animation. So I'll simply animate the center position. So we have a simple animation and now we only need to connect the rectangle to these two masks. And because the text is visible on this side, which we don't want, we simply have to select the rectangle and invert the mask. And to finish this off, we can simply add some 
drop shadow to this, make an adjustment, and you have a modern looking title that was made in 3D with combination with 2D as the text. All that's left to do is to watch the previous video, copy this a bunch of times, or make this as a separate macro, and then also make a macro for the actual title of the bullet point list, which will be the same, just the box will be a little bit longer than what I've made as the bullet point list. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.